Hello beautiful book lovers and welcome to my seventh annual review of the most beautiful books of the year, celebrating publications across 2023. If you're new to my channel, yes I do read all the books, so they're beautiful both inside and out. But for this guide I'm mainly looking for books that have something a little bit extra. Special bindings, incredible illustrations, quality design, that sort of thing. Books in the video are listed in the info box, and I also have an illustrated list of all the books on my website, along with a few bonus titles I couldn't fit into the video, so there's a link to that below as well. First of all, I want to start by sharing some books that are perfect gifts for children and the young at heart, and Coralie Bickford Smith's The Squirrel and the Lost Treasure is the perfect place to start. Coralie is the designer behind all the beautiful penguin cloth bound classics and she's made a few of these cloth bound picture books which really give her a chance to show off her stunning design skills. It's beautifully made and the squirrel is absolutely adorable. This image with the oak tree inside the acorn is one of my absolute favourites. Olive is a delightful wordless fairy tale by Jed Alexander. It's a retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk, exploring perspective from the point of view of a small girl. I also have two others in this series, Red and Gold, and they're all just lovely for imaginative youngsters or anyone who just wants to appreciate the artwork. This picture book adaptation of Sleeping Beauty by French illustrator Charlotte Gaston is an enchantingly illustrated retelling of Tchaikovsky's classic fairy tale ballet. It includes intricately layered die cut illustrations, which as you can see here are really cleverly used to show the battle through the tangled vines around her castle. This version of Little Red Riding Hood by Trina Schart Hyman is actually a re-release. It's celebrating its 40th anniversary. Hyman's one of my favourite American illustrators, and this edition of the classic story is cosy and romantic, and a worthy addition to the shelves of anyone who loves lushly illustrated fairy tales.
Moving from cosy to devastating, Benjamin Lacombe's interpretation of Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid is hauntingly beautiful, but probably more appreciated by adult fans. Frustrated with overly feminine depictions of mermaids, Lacombe's interpretation is more androgynous, and the book also includes some historical biography and letters from Anderson to Edvard Collins, along with an essay on the LGBTQ themes in Anderson's life. This pocket-sized cloth-bound collection of Enchanted Tales and Happily Ever Afters is a Macmillan Collector's Library gift edition of 10 classic fairy tales. It includes lots of classic illustration from the Masters of Golden Age illustration and would make a sweet gift. Next up, something fun. Based on Tova Janssen's Moomin Adventures, this interactive book on Moomin Mail is full of envelopes that contain letters and postcards. There's a little book, a pancake recipe from Moomin Mama, and some enchanting origami games. Super fun. If gothic humour is more your style, Godfather Death by Sally Nichols is a retelling of this uncommon grim fairy tale. It's beautifully illustrated by Julia Sada in an almost medieval woodcut style. It's dark, but slyly humorous, and it's beautifully done. Island of Whispers by Frances Harding is a ghostly middle grade fantasy that blends elements of gothic thriller with a coming of age narrative. Shimmery silver moths on the cover give it great shelf appeal, while Emily Gravett's spectacular blue hued illustrations reveal an enigmatic island teeming with spectral presences and hidden mysteries.
The Ice Children by M.G. Leonard is a sort of Narnia Snow Queen mashup set in the context of global warming. It's a cosy, wintry read, and the story sees children transformed into ice statues by sinister forces. It's illustrated in black and white throughout by Penny Neville Lee. This edition I'm showing here with the pretty snowflake sprayed page edges is still available at Waterstones at the time of me filming, which of course I've linked below if you're interested. The Blunders is another hilarious offering by David Williams, a worthy successor to Roald Dahl, I think. It's filled with his usual riotous mishaps and hilarious escapades, and I think this is one of his best. It's fabulously illustrated, and the hardbacks feature a hidden cover under the dust jacket, which is always a delight. This year's the 25th anniversary of Skellig by David Armand, and if you don't already know this tale, it's lovely, it's filled with the joy of friendship and the power of compassion. Although the paper quality is a bit thin in this anniversary edition, it does have captivating black and white illustrations by Tom DeFreston to make up for it. Girls Who Slay Monsters by Ellen Ryan retells ancient Irish myths with a modern perspective. It's perfect for introducing middle graders to these older Celtic stories. It follows this modern trend of highlighting warrior goddesses and women who are active protectors. The stunning illustrations by Shona Shirley MacDonald are an absolute highlight. This oversized beauty by Raoul DeLeo is a delightful collection of natural history notes and illustrations to accompany the discovery of a fictional new continent, Terra Ultima. It's full of imaginative and beautiful creatures for fantasy and nature lovers to pour over. Scientific illustrator Jennifer Smith brings the wild wonders of bioluminescence to life in GLOW, a fascinating exploration of creatures that glow in the dark. The illustrations use UV ink to make them appear really luminous on the page, and this adds to the immersive experience of reading, and the short snippets of scientific knowledge and history that accompany them really pack a lot of information in. Our second book, also titled Glow, is A Child's Guide to the Night Sky. Written by NASA science writer Noelia Gonzalez, there's lots to learn here, ranging from descriptions of how to locate constellations, followed by an engaging exploration of their mythology. 
The detailed illustrations by Sarah Meadows really help draw you in, and it does cover both hemispheres, which is important for an international audience. Another title for budding astronomers, How Our Solar Systems Began by Aina Bastard, is another large format, beautifully designed and fantastically illustrated journey across the landscapes of the solar system. It has detailed text to entice readers of all levels. Aina uses really interesting illustration techniques, including translucent pages, that I think marks this one apart from other similar books. For the curious, The Mysteries is the first book published in years by Bill Watterson, creator of the beloved Calvin and Hobbes series. It's beautifully designed and bound in cloth, but to be honest, it isn't what I was expecting. It's a curious illustrated fable for adults that he worked on in collaboration with caricaturist John Cash. It explores mystery and wonder and how that can survive in our modern world of progress and science. I'd recommend this one for deep thinkers and philosophers. And to round us this section, Neil Gaiman's poem, What You Need to Be Warm, is a poignant reflection on finding warmth and security as we face the challenges of the world. It was inspired by comments on Gaiman's Twitter slash X account, and it includes beautiful illustrations from 13 gifted artists. Profits from the settlers' book support refugees, and so this is another really important way that you can feel warm if you buy it. Moving along to the classics, let me share one of my favourites of the year. Robert Nippold's edition of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald is divine. It's got gorgeous Art Deco styling, stylish and atmospheric illustrations, black sprayed page edges and fold out pages, and it's magically supplemented with removable ephemera for a truly immersive experience, including a map of New York City, cocktail recipes, newspaper articles and mini fact sheets. And extending the extremely thoughtful design, there's even an index to the removable items at the back in case you pull them out and forget where they go. It's an absolute stunner. The original edition of The Little Prince with illustrations by its author is so charming. It does take someone very special like illustrator Chris Riddell to come up with a worthy new edition. 
This one has a fresh translation and Riddell's gentle emotional illustrations, which are a perfect match to a perfect story. I love the original Watership Down novel by Richard Adams, so I was nervous but then really pleased by this excellent and considerate graphic novel adaptation by James Sturm and Joe Sutphin. If you don't know the story, it's a powerful exploration of essential themes such as friendship and leadership, society, survival, through, told through the adventures of a band of rabbits. The illustrations are gorgeous, and this graphic novel is a wonderful way to introduce a beautiful tale to a new generation of thoughtful readers. Now this cloth bound edition of The Secret Garden is the second title in the new Abbeville Illustrated Classics series. The covers are cloth and they have decorative gilt embellishments and the illustrations are by classic golden age illustrators, in this case Charles Robinson. It also has a specially commissioned introduction that tells some of the history of the illustration of the novel. It's a lovely keepsake edition. Fantasy artist John Coulthart has released a stunning edition of Frankenstein. It's got decorative sprayed page edges, a ribbon bookmark, and 25 haunting duotone illustrations. This edition features the complete Mary Shelley 1818 edition text, and it's got bonus material including John Polidori's The Vampire and Lord Byron's The Darkness, which were the two other works created during the famous 1818 writing contest that sparked Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein in the first place. I've been highlighting the Chilton classics for several years now. The design is based on the style of beautiful vintage classic novels from Victorian times. So they're small format volumes and they've got heavyweight paper, although it is a bit glossy if that's a concern for you. 
photos never do justice to the gorgeous tactile cover designs. And these volumes tuck so easily in a bag for travel or an emergency read. Chilton released 10 new titles this year, ranging from classic philosophy and theatre to adventure and mystery, something for everyone. I also collect quite a few titles in the Barnes & Noble Leatherbound Classic series, and I even have a complete guide to all of them on my website if you want to lose a good half hour looking at everything they've ever done over the years. There were five new titles released this year, including this fun omnibus edition of Indiana Jones Adventures. And this year saw the last two lots of spring and summer titles released in Penguin's new Little Cloth Bound Classic series. These are small format short stories and novellas bound in cloth with lovely designs by Coralie Bickford-Smith. There are lots to choose from and they're the perfect size for a quick read or a stocking stuffer. And if you're looking for more recent titles in the fiction genre and you love Agatha Christie and have ever wondered about the Sophie Hanna new Hercule Poirot books, I can highly recommend them. She does a truly excellent job of capturing Christie's voice and style of cosy mystery with her latest Silent Night being a fun wintry Christmas mystery. The UK editions have a cute Poirot silhouette stamped on the boards under the dust jacket. But of course, if you're after real Agatha Christie, HarperCollins are still doing their special editions. They finished off their seasonal short story collections this year, one of which I'm showing here, and they've also released a few more in their series with a more painterly cover style. But it's important to know that the new volumes are slightly different size to the previous editions, so they won't exactly match, which is rather infuriating. These special edition Heartstopper graphic novels by Alice Oseman are probably made a little bit cheaply, but they do have foiled covers and decorative end papers and they look lovely on the shelf if you're interested in reading the books that inspired the hit Netflix series. The Japanese bestseller Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi is a charming short novel that explores what would you do if you could travel back in time? Who would you want to meet, maybe for the last time? Despite its glued binding, this is a lovely gift edition with decorative end papers and blue stained page edges. Inside the Mind of Sherlock Holmes, The Case of the Scandalous Ticket by Cyril Liron and Benoit Dahan is a new home story told in graphic novel style with fabulous illustrations that delve into the inner working of Sherlock's mind as he solves a complex and intriguing case. His thought processes are cleverly presented as a factory of ideas and the illustrations are laid out in a way that I felt was reminiscent of period anatomy textbooks. Anyway, it's something different and fun for a mystery fan.
Now, one of my favorite genres is myths and legends, so I always have a bunch of beautiful books to show off here. Let's start with Goddesses and Heroines by Jean Menzies, which is part of the DK Ancient Myth series that's gorgeously illustrated by Katie Ponder. This volume includes short profiles and stories of more than 80 goddesses and other powerful women. Although it's aimed at around a middle grade level, the history is accurate and informative enough to entertain an adult reader. And again, the illustrations are gorgeous. Law of the Stars by Claire Cox Starkey and Hannah Bess Ross is a mystical guide to folklore and wisdom of the heavens. Traditional folk style artworks accompany the secrets of augury, the meanings of the types of weather, stories explaining the birth of the Milky Way, and the beings and deities said to govern the worlds above. Also part of a series, the companion books explore the law of the wild and the law of the land. This lovely cloth-bound book with gilt cover designs and gold sprayed page edges is A Natural History of Magical Beasts, a new addition to the Folklore Field Guide series by Emily Hawkins and Jessica Rue. It looks luxurious and it's filled with beautiful illustrations and precise notes detailing the secret lives of magical beasts. If you're a fan of nautical folklore, the Serpent, Siren, Maelstrom and Myth collection by Jerry Smith has gathered together myths and folktales from cultures around the world. For illustrations, the book draws on artworks, paintings, and medieval illuminations, maps and sailor sketches from the incredible collection held by the British Library. If the heavens and constellations are more your thing, this lovely treasury of folklore of the stars and skies by Willow Winsham delves into the captivating realm of starlit tales and cosmic wonders, presenting an array of myths and legends that have captivated humanity throughout the ages. The mysteries of the universe are explored through world mythology and enchanting tales that have shaped our understanding of the mysteries of the heaven. And Joe McLaren has added sweet black and white illustrations throughout. Another real stunner this year is the UK illustrated edition of Mythos by Stephen Fry. Last year's US deluxe edition was also beautiful and quite educational as it featured classic artwork inspired by the myths. But for me, this UK edition better captures the magic and mayhem of the world of the Greek gods in glorious colour. If you haven't read these before, Fry does a wonderful job of retelling the ancient stories in accessible prose for the modern age.
Another beautiful collection of Greek myths is this collection of stories put out by Macmillan. This one's filled with classic Golden Age illustrations from iconic artists such as Arthur Rackham and Walter Crane, and it also has a bonus illustrated account of the authors and artists behind Macmillan's original story collections, first published in the 1800s. Now, forests have long been associated with witchcraft and mystical beings and other enigmatic creatures, yet they also serve as sanctuaries, preserving ancient magic and hosting an array of spellbinding tree species. Witch's Forest, a magical woodland odyssey by Sandra Lawrence, invites readers on an enchanting exploration of these woodlands and their lore, revealing the secrets of magical trees, from the birch known for its broomsticks, to the iconic tree of life. Housegeister, a gorgeous coffee table photography book in the excellent Wool of Bat series, immerses you into the heart of German folklore, where domestic dragons and moss women, kobolds and wigtail roam free. Lifelike sculptures have been meticulously crafted based on historical descriptions and then beautifully photographed in darker, mysterious German landscapes. It's not really for children. Think of it more like the sinister uncle of Elf on the Shelf creepily peering in through a window at night. It's a sumptuous blend of eerie and enchanting. Now you might be familiar with earlier editions of this whimsical, enchanting journey into the world of gnomes. It's been a bestseller since its original publication in 1977. This updated and revised edition has lovely production values and a few pages of new content as well. And let's round out this section with a fun illustrated poetry collection. Gods and Monsters is a gorgeous collection of classic and contemporary mythological poems. It's illustrated throughout in black and white by Chris Riddell. It includes retellings and reimaginings of Roman, Greek, ancient Egyptian, Norse, Celtic, Aztec, Mayan, and Incan mythology. A real trip around the world.
Moving along to fantasy, let's appreciate the third book in Mina Lima's interactive Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The full colour illustrations on every page are extraordinary, and although they're sometimes overshadowed by the interactive elements, they really shouldn't be because they're beautiful and grace almost every page. The eight interactive elements include the Marauder's Map, the Night Bus, the Grim in a Teacup, a spinning time turner and more. This year saw a couple of special new editions of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, which feature more than 50 of his own sketches, drawings, paintings and maps, with the text printed in two colours. The enhanced edition has blue sprayed page edges with runic writing on it and two removable maps, Thraw's Map and Wilderland.
The leather bound edition is really pretty. It's quarter bound in green leather with raised ribs on the spine, stamped in three foils on black cloth boards, and it's housed in a cloth bound slipcase with a cut out cover. The page edges, the pages are edged in gold and it includes a ribbon marker. And this edition has a bonus illustrated 88 page booklet. The same two maps as the other edition, but these ones are poster size. And it also includes a printed art card reproducing Tolkien's original dust jacket painting. A Stroke of the Pen is a delightful treasure trove of 20 early short stories by Terry Pratchett. These are rediscovered tales that he wrote under a pseudonym for newspapers during the 1970s and 80s, and they feature his trademark humour, so the collection will definitely bring joy to its readers. There are several editions available, all have charming woodcut illustrations throughout. The one I'm showing here is the special Waterstones trade edition with foiling on the boards. But there's one available at Discworld with a cream cover and red sprayed page edges and also a fairly expensive cloth bound exclusive that comes with a limited edition poster and slip case. This illustrated 20th anniversary edition of Aragon by Christopher Paolini is another of my favourites from this year. It's huge and gorgeously illustrated with over 50 full colour paintings by Siddhar Chaturvedi, who also creates art for Magic the Gathering in Dungeons and Dragons. There are plans to do illustrated editions of all the books in the Inheritance Cycle if this one does well, so fingers crossed that it does. Once Upon a Time in the North by Philip Pullman is a gorgeously illustrated novella that tells how two beloved characters from the His Stark material series first met, young Texan balloonist Lee Scoresby and armoured bear Yorick Bjornesson. Chris Wamel's beautiful colour woodcut illustrations make this one a timeless classic.
Peter S. Beagle is the author of the best-selling The Last Unicorn, and these two essential volumes collect some of his best fantastical tales over the past 40 years. They've got beautiful hidden covers under glorious dust jackets and delightful dreamy black and white illustrations by Stephanie Pumon Law. I apologise I've only got one to show here because I've let the other one out, but rest assured it's equally lovely. These deluxe editions of the two Dune sequels, Dune Messiah and Children of Dune, feature stained page edges, stamped quotes on the covers under the dust jacket, and reversible cover art. The dust jackets have a sort of a matte feel. They're kind of cool, but they do pick up fingerprints. This collector's edition of The Cruel Prince by Holly Black is kind of fun. It's got black decorations on a black slipcase. The cover is a lush and velvety along with black sprayed page edges. But I'm not sure if they're planning to do the rest of the series. Of course, I'd be remiss not to talk about one of the biggest breakout hits of the year, Romantic Dragon Fantasy Fourth Wing, and its sequel Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. There are so many different special trade editions of these books, so if you're interested, I wrote an article exploring all of them, which I'll add to the links below. This seems to be part of a new trend with publishers, including special features on the first print run, often sprayed page edges, sometimes foiled boards under the covers, features you used to only see in book boxes. There's so many of these, I don't want to fill my whole video with them, so I'm just going to film a few here. But if you do collect these sorts of books and don't want the commitment of a monthly book box subscription, I run a page on my website which tracks upcoming special editions, and there are just heaps of cool ones there. Of course, I'll add the link to this down below as well. So all three of the US editions of Daughter of the Pirate King series by Trisha Levenseller have been given this special treatment. They've got metallic foiled covers, decorative sprayed page edges, end paper maps, and a ribbon bookmark. Let's start the non-fiction section with something completely adorable. The Unfortunate Life of Worms by Naomi Vola. This is a whimsical, delightful and an original presentation of everything you never knew you needed to know about worms. It will definitely bring a smile to your face.
An oversized and beautifully illustrated celebration of the life of trees, Arboretum is the latest in the wonderful Welcome to the Museum series. Full of fascinating information and beautiful pictures, so perfect for any nature lover. This is a new illustrated edition of Entangled Life, Merlin Sheldrake's recently released fascinating exploration of the role of fungi in our world. This edition is accompanied by over 100 glorious colour photographs. It's fantastic for anyone curious about the natural world. The Wolf Girl, The Greeks and the Gods by Tom Holland is a brilliant weaving of history, myth and imagination to tell the gripping story of the Persian Wars. The illustrations by Jason Cockroft are dark and captivating. It's a perfect introduction to ancient history that would also be appropriate for youthful readers. Snails and Monkey Tales by Michael Arndt is a super cute book focusing on, of all things, punctuation marks and symbols. It explores their typographic origins, names and shapes, as well as how to use them. I know, I'm a language nerd, I find this sort of thing endlessly fascinating. And to finish up this section, we've got a gorgeous book on language by word expert Susie Dent, Roots of Happiness. The book is filled with a hundred words and phrases for joy and hope. Some are well known, but others long forgotten. And they're paired with bright illustrations by Harriet Hobday that are sure to uplift the soul. Okay, so I'm going to skim through my pop-up section a little bit quickly because 2023 was a real cracker of a year for pop-up books and I'm working on a special video that celebrates the best of them in much greater detail that I'll be releasing soon. 
So many of the books this year have Matthew Reinhardt as a key paper engineer that I wonder how he had time to sleep. The ultimate pop-up book of Dungeons and Dragons features all the classic fantasy locations and fantastical creatures that you'd hope for, along with Easter eggs hidden behind interactive doors and the ability to fold the whole book out into a huge diorama. Matthew Reinhardt's The Little Mermaid is a pop-up celebration of the Disney princess interpretation of the original Hans Christian Andersen tale, and it's got plenty of Reinhardt's signature hidden surprises on every page. The Minecraft official pop-up book is sure to bring joy to nostalgic fans. It's got favourite mobs and creatures, caves and dungeons, and you can relive classic experiences such as surviving your first night to building a unique base. And I just received the Harry Potter pop-up guide to the creatures of the Wizarding World yesterday. It's looking like a lot of fun. It's got intricately detailed spreads that leap from the pages along with behind the scenes facts from the making of the film series. And I always like to finish up these videos with a few special publications that are less affordable but might be perfect for a special gift or self-celebration. The Fantastic Gustave Doré by Alex Perret is an incredible art book. If you've got any literature from the 19th century, your library likely contains some of Doré's work as it graced volumes from the Bible to Shakespeare, romantic fairy tales to dark tales of horror. This book is absolutely massive, so you can really enjoy the detail and quality of his extraordinarily intricate prints and paintings. The book itself is beautifully produced, with a quarter cloth binding, gold foil stamping, textural embossing on the covers, and silk screen printing on all three page edges. I've been poring over it for months and I find new details every time. King's Langley Press is a new fine press which recently opened in Australia. Wheels of Chance by H.G. Wells is their first publication and it's beautifully done. The story is set during the golden age of the cycling craze that swept Victorian England and it's a comic gem that takes its readers on a bicycle tour of the English countryside as the protagonist navigates social norms and uncovers insights into his own character. This special edition is bound in green cloth with gilt accents. It's illustrated in colour by Nicolai Foman, and it also features classic period illustrations in black and white from the first edition by J. Aiden Symington. It even includes vintage style maps by Mike Hall. It's a lovely book, and I've already pre-ordered their second publication, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, which will come out next year. The Mushroom Garden by Adam Ollers is an even smaller press book, self-published in fact, which came out through a Kickstarter back in 2021. 
It's a surreal adventure story and reads like a classic fairy tale filled with the magic of nature. It's beautifully bound and designed, but it's those ethereal mushroom illustrations that really make me catch my breath. You can buy this one from the author directly. In the late 19-teens, legendary illustrator Kay Nielsen produced a set of stunning illustrations for A Thousand and One Nights, but unfortunately post-war restrictions meant that the project was never published. A few years ago, Tashin brought out a huge portfolio of prints to celebrate these gorgeous illustrations, reproduced from the original watercolours, but it was terribly expensive. So I'm really happy they finally released this much more affordable book edition. The book also includes three illustrated essays on the making of the series, the origins of Nielsen's imagery, and a history of the tales themselves. All of these oversized books in the Beehive Illuminated Edition series are stunning. The Quiden collection, which I'm showing here, is an assortment of supernatural Japanese stories, nightmares and strange tales that were originally published in Lafcadio Hearn's books Quiden, which translate as ghost stories, and Shadow Wings. Over 60 rich layered artworks by Kent Williams dreamily merge the real and the supernatural, beautifully capturing the haunting beauty subtle horror and mysticism of Hearn's poetic folklore narrations. The long-awaited 25th anniversary edition of Little Big or The Fairies Parliament by John Crowley was finally released in time for its 40th anniversary. Seriously, if you pre-ordered this book back when it was announced, you've been waiting many, many years for it to come out, and I'd pretty much given up on it before it turned up on my doorstep. But it did finally arrive, and it's a lovely publication for fans to cherish. It's filled with artwork by Peter Milton, and it's been produced to high production standards with fine paper, cloth covering and a sewn binding. Also, you no longer have to wait 15 years to get it now.
And finally, the Folio Society has always released some beautiful editions this year. I didn't buy any of their limited editions, so the prices for those are just getting a bit out of hand. But I did want to share some of my favourite of their standard editions in case you'd like some inspiration. Invisible Cities by Italo Covillino is an absolute gem, and I think probably my favourite folio volume from this year's collection. The story itself is richly inventive, weaving together prose, poetry and philosophy, and includes imagined conversations between the explorer Marco Polo and the Mongol Emperor Kublai Khan. Dave McKean captures fantastical cities as they unspool from their minds, and in addition to the ten full-page illustrations, there are numerous small illustrations of chess pieces which reflect Khan's claim that if only he can learn the rules of his cities, as in a chess game, he will finally possess his empire, even if he will never know all the cities it contains. The book is quarter bound in textured paper, and the pages feel super luxurious. It's also got a very useful introduction that helps you understand what's going on. The Folio Society edition of the original Dune by Frank Herbert is absolutely stunning, and this edition of the sequel Dune Messiah absolutely holds up to these high standards. It's beautifully illustrated in colour by Hilary Clark, including a double page spread, and also has 10 black and white chapter headings. There's also an ed paper map by Martin Sanders, and it comes in a beautiful printed slip case. The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro is a spectacular fantasy novel inspired by Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and the rich imagery of Arthurian legend. This edition's got seven colour illustrations, including a double page spread, and four black and white images by artist Jana Heidersdorf. It's got metallic gold end papers and another pretty printed slip case. Monkey is one of the four great Chinese novels and a worldwide cultural phenomenon. I grew up watching the crazy cult TV adaptation from the 70s, which would probably be considered pretty questionable by today's standards. But this Folio Society edition is rather more thoughtful. It's got exquisite artwork by Mu Pan, including a fold-out map. And I'm going to finish today with the delightful explosion of magic that is Charmed Life by Diana Wynne-Jones. 
This fantasy classic is illustrated by Alison Bryant and it also includes a couple of bonus short stories from the world of Crestomancy. Well, I'm impressed if any of you stuck around through this whole video to the end. So if you did, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found a few titles that were new to you and tickled your fancy. Please share your favourites in the comments. I'm always curious to know what other people are collecting. Until next time, bye!